Welcome to Drupal Guitars. My name is Chris, and it's Saturday here in the workshop, and I was thinking to myself, it's been a very, very, very long time since I've shown the audience at home one of my finished acoustic guitars, and there's a good reason for that. Matt and I have been so, so busy for the last two years um, getting everything ready for the launch of these electric guitars, our title casters, which we do have a link to down below, um, that that process of not learning how to make the guitar, but learning how to manufacture the guitar in a large production has sucked up all of my attention. And I really haven't had as much time to dedicate to my acoustic guitar building as I would like. Uh, and the wait list is just stacking up. So I have really gotten back into really hardcore working on my acoustic guitar back backlog. And uh, I'm finally starting to catch up. And this particular guitar is one that I just finished up yesterday. Uh, I love it so much, and I really am excited to show you guys at home uh, a little bit about what makes it tick, and then hopefully you guys with some good headphones or some good speakers can listen to it and uh, decide for yourself whether or not you think it's a good sounding guitar. Okay, to start out, I want to give you guys a little bit of detail about this particular guitar. It is my, what I call the Grand Session model, which is by far my most popular model. It's a, uh, if I remember off the top of my head, it's a 16-inch uh, lower bout. Um, so it is quite a large guitar. It has a five inch deep body. Um, so in my opinion, it's kind of like sits up there with a dreadnought as far as size. Um, but because it has a skinnier waist, um, more like a tailor, it is a lot more comfortable to hold. Every single guitar that I've built on my wait list, I think for the last five or six years has been this particular model. And it's because I always recommend it. It's just a fantastic, fantastic guitar shape. And on this particular guitar, the client requested that we go for a really understated look on the whole guitar and came to me with the request that we use a really nicely figured walnut for the back and sides. Now, this is not my first walnut guitar. In fact, the guitar that I gig with every single time I play a show is a walnut back and side guitar with a Port Orford cedar top. So I was already really familiar with how it sounds and typically with walnut guitars, at least the ones that I've built and played, um, I always describe the sound of walnut as being very dry. So it is a great tone wood, um, not just visually, if you get a really awesome set like this particular set, this Clara Walnut, um, which has such a nice uniform, let's see if we can get it in the camera, we're nice and yes, uh, get that flame that's on there, it's just very, very nice. Um, and so you get this awesome uh, domestic hardwood if you're here in the United States um, that is really, really affordable but also beautiful looking and wonderful sounding if you use it on a guitar for the application that you're looking for. On top of the walnut back and sides, the client ended up landing on a torrified Sitka spruce top. Um, so this is my very first time using this particular combination. My thoughts on it when he said that he would like to do these two types of wood for his guitar were that that's gonna make for a very, very crisp guitar. I don't. I don't know if that makes sense, but with the dryness of the walnut, with the bass frequencies that walnut will bring into it, because it's dry, but it also has a good amount of bottom end in my opinion, uh, along with the torrified Sitka spruce, which you take all of the things that I already like about Sitka and you kind of amplify them, but also you kind of dry them out a little bit, not both literally, but sonically as well. It kind of just makes the wood sound more even in my opinion. So I thought, man, this guitar is really gonna be uh, a very um, even guitar and it's gonna sound very nice. Because remember, when I build a guitar, I have no idea how it's gonna sound until I finally get to string it up, which like I said, was just yesterday. And I started building this guitar about six months ago, just because I've been so busy. Um, and I'll tell you what, in the end, I think this guitar is just absolutely fantastic and I will be recommending it to people who are looking for this particular sound in the future. But before I actually play it, I wanna take a second and go over the rest of the details on the guitar. This particular instrument is fully bound in Macassar Ebony, which I have not actually ever done before on a guitar. Um, and then was excited to try out because the guitars that I had seen with Ebony binding uh, online or in person, I'd always really liked, but I had not done it yet. Uh, and the other thing that he asked for, which is very, very rare um, for clients of mine, is that he didn't want any abalone on the guitar pretty much anywhere. I think, yeah, the only spot that we ended up putting it was on the rosette and on the headstock. And 
I've been excited about doing a guitar without any pearl on it, uh, you know, because every guitar I build is for a customer uh, and I have to do what they ask me to do. It's their guitar after all, right? Uh, and uh, I don't want to talk people out of the things that they want. And so I was excited to finally have somebody who was like, you know what, no pearl at all on the perimeter of the guitar or on the fretboard. And I'll tell you what, every single person who has seen this guitar hanging on the wall has gone, that guitar might be your prettiest. Uh, and it just speaks so elegantly, the whole guitar. It just doesn't have all of that bling, for lack of other words, on it. And it just lets the curves of the guitar and the lines of the guitar speak for itself. And I'm just really, really excited about how it came out. Um, I ended up doing, instead of actually putting Macassar Ebony binding on the fretboard, because my fretboards are Macassar Ebony, I did the um, faux bound fretboard, which basically is this, the fret slots don't go all the way to the end, and it allows us to be able to put those um, kind of, it looks like it's a bound fretboard, but without all the trouble, essentially. Um, and then did the Macassar Ebony headstock and a Macassar Ebony backstrap here, and as well as down here on the heel cap and on the end graft. A Spanish cedar neck on this guitar, um, which is always something that I recommend to folks, especially if they're looking for a lightweight guitar. And I'll tell you what, this neck paired with this lightweight walnut and the torrified spruce, this guitar, I don't have the exact measurements on it, but it weighs next to nothing and just feels so absolutely nice. As always, I put a Brazilian rosewood bridge on this guitar and uh, we use cattle bone nut and saddle. Um, in addition to all of that, the client did request that I put a pickup in it, so we put the LR Bags Anthem Dual Source pickup in it, and it is just always my uh, my most recommended premium pickup for clients because I think it just does a wonderful job of picking up what the guitar sounds like acoustically when you plug it in, which is not easy to do for most pickups in my opinion. Now the thing about what I do, especially once clients take some time to look at my inlay work, is that they come to me with some very, very unique inlay requests and I encourage them to do so. And in this particular case, the customer had a unique request. Unfortunately, the client's spouse suffers from a terminal illness and um, requested that I put a photograph, his favorite photograph of his wife on the guitar. And um, that made it really important to me that I do a really good job with it um, because the personalization of the guitar is something that I really, really, really enjoy doing with every single guitar. Sometimes it's a lot of work, but it's important to me. It's important work. So he sent me a photograph and I did what I could with it uh, and made an illustration out of it and then spent, uh, God, I'd guess about a week working on the inlay. And I'm really, really happy with how it came out. Um, I don't know if I want to share the original photo, but you guys get the idea. We can show the inlay. And uh, I think that it just came out really, really nice. And it will end up being just a wonderful tribute to his spouse here in the future. Um, and so in the end, this guitar really, really is more than a guitar for him. Um, it's an heirloom piece that's gonna be passed down to his children and to the grandchildren and then on and on and on. Uh, and it's got the family name on the inside and so, it just, for me as a builder, it means a lot that people entrust me to tell their stories, um, to execute a guitar in a way that matches everything that they imagined, whether it's um, particularly for this client wanted a specific thickness and a width on his neck, as well as sonically, is it checking all the boxes for the type of music that they're gonna play, and then in the very end, the ability to be able to add inlays that represent a part of their life story, and I think that that's really, really cool. Um, with that, we don't want to make the video too long and I'll get into showing you guys how this thing sounds. Okay, before we play any notes on the actual guitar, I want to take just a second to cover the signal chain so that you guys at home know that what you're listening to can be trusted. Um, I am using the Zoom H6 field recorder and I'm using the XY microphones and we're about 8 to 10 inches away from the sound hole. Um, and we're not doing any compression, no reverb, no post-processing whatsoever. So as long as you guys at home are listening to this with quality headphones or good quality speakers, I think that you should be able to trust that what you hear is what the actual guitar sounds like, but your mileage may vary uh, depending on what you're listening to with. Um, so yeah, man, uh, let's just play a couple of the major chords. We'll go all the way through them, let them ring a little bit so that you guys can hear them uh, and see what they sound like.
there it is. <laughs> um, we are using Daddario uh, Phosphor Bronze, 8020 Phosphor Bronze with the um, 12s as the high E. So I believe that's their uh, their light gauge. Yeah, this is their light gauge string, um, just for reference at home. Um, as I was mentioning in the description of this guitar, can't you just hear how just beautifully uh, and wonderfully dry it sounds? Let's try, I like my, one of my favorites on this guitar is the F major, just open F major. Really, really, really love how this guitar sounds. I don't know what it is about it that I love so much, but man. Dude, yes, just love it, love it, love it. Um, on this guitar, also I wanted to mention that we did do a satin nitrocellulose finish on the neck. Uh, and it's what I've started offering as standard on all of my guitars. I just love the way a satin neck feels. Um, and on the bodies, it's always a nitrocellulose uh, gloss coat unless uh, somebody wanted something else, which I have never done. Um, and we do the double carbon fiber reinforced neck, which allows me to be able to shape these necks in a way that they are the exact same thickness from the nut all the way to just about the 12th fret. So they don't get any thicker, uh, but we still have the good strength. Um, that in combination with a two-way truss rod gives amazing control on these necks as far as the amount of relief that you have on them. And the carbon fiber offers a level of stability that in my opinion can't be matched, uh, especially if this is a guitar that you're gonna move, um, maybe play indoors and then outdoors and indoors and outdoors. The humidity and the temperature changes just don't seem to matter nearly as much. And then to cap it all off, just some beautiful Waverly three on plate tuning machines with ebony buttons on them. Um, and I just couldn't be more happy with how this guitar looks and sounds and plays. Um, and I'm excited to ship this thing out in just uh, like 24, 48 hours to its new home. Uh, and I'm super excited to hear what the client has to say about it once he sees it. I um, hope that you guys like this video. Um, let me know what you guys think of this guitar. Um, and maybe you own one that's just like it. Let me know what you think about this wood combination. And we'll see y'all in the next one.